I am one of the chosen. This is the chosen race. Look at this earth and look at what's been created upon it and look at what, this is the chosen race. It is me, my blood, my people. All right, to keep bare arms shall not be infringed. All the thousands upon thousands of militia members all across this country, I mean, that says a lot. Try it. It's not we the people anymore. It's them, the tyrannical, authoritarian bastards. Want to hold your camera? We the little poor peasants that have had our mouth taped up and shut. One in the chamber, you know, it's, it's always in there, you know. The ammunition's always in there. We the ones that want to speak are we the ones that lie dead in graves in prison? <laughs> Nobody's gonna take my hands away. Nobody. And if they ever try to do that, there is gonna be death promised to you. following one of Utah's most notorious hate groups, the Rocky Mountain Militia. Johnny Bangerter, leader of the group, started to feel the heat from local police. Even since you guys have gotten here, the cops are just, they're just getting more cops and uh, it's all for us. Militia organizer David Dalby revealed his plans for a secret compound in the hills. The cool thing about this whole project being free. And militia members Mary and Mary Lynn headed to New York City to share their views nationally on the Geraldo Show. And we can reach someone, even one person out of the millions, is good enough for me. Seaman? Seaman going to the Geraldo Show? Do we need to show ID? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi. No, I'm Tara oh. Ann. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to give you some forms to fill out. All right. You like it out here? Yeah, it's really different. Where are you from? Utah. Nice. So wow. We're used to... It's quite a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just put my name and address here. Sure, yeah, name and address up there. Welcome to the latest in our continuing series on race and justice. These are programs that we hope will keep people talking about racism, which we firmly believe is the single most divisive issue in our country today. This one is about the latest incarnation, the latest changes with the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK. We're the white race. Um, we're the chosen ones. Do you sincerely believe in your heart that you're better than anyone else? Yes. Yes. I really do. Your name again? Lynn, now tell us about yourself, Lynn. I know you're pregnant, but come on, stand up. Come on. There you go. Tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm a white racist. I'm Christian identity, and we believe in preparing for the Holy War. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the Holy War being what? Being actually, it's going on all, and it's been going on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, any time any one of our people that we care about and love get injured, we're able able to tend to them, and that's very important to us. Okay. We know that our country is headed in a, a very dangerous okay, okay, path. Okay. Um, so you've learned nursing just to save white people wounded in the Holy War. Well, of course I have. That's, that was what motivated me. Do you have a job but now? I'm a mother. And you have and another on the way. And that to me is the most honorable job in the right, world I that agree, you can have. Right, I agree. I agree. On that we all agree. Are you involved in this? Yes. What, what's you, where, where do you fit in? I'm Mary Lynn's mother. Really? So yes. what do you think, Mom, when you hear this? I love Mary Lynn, and I love everything about her and what she does. And the, this whole Holy War racism business, you buy that? I understand it, yes, Did I know. Did you teach her? That? No, she and uh, my son pretty yeah. much opened my eyes and... Oh, they converted you? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mom and daughter. And these ladies be reformed. Thank you. They're not happy. They didn't get to defend their ideas. They feel like Geraldo played them as fools. Did he get married or something? 
Yes. <sighs> well, five seconds of talk. That's, I guess you could say, it happened again. They didn't really let us, I don't think, say our piece. I think Mary and Mary Lynn will continue to try and get the word out in whatever way they can, in whatever form will have them. It was a waste of our time. The Clinton administration, the federal government, they've got no friends around here. David is busy planning what he calls the ultimate move out of the system. Everyone I meet, every day, everywhere I go, old farmers, little kids, everybody, everybody has a gripe with the federal government. The other day, I went with Dave to buy supplies for the big move. It's called Wiggle Board. It comes pretty wide then, doesn't it? It's about 20, 20 feet wide. It doesn't hurt to have a few extras. 50 foot of the six Pardon mil me. and eight foot roll. What, uh, black or clear? Clear. Okay. Dave's trying to not only move okay. out of the system and away from society, but he's also building his own house for the first time. Now, what about this, uh, the wiggle board and the, uh, we've got that. And the furring strips? We've got that. Okay, those are what I need then. Now okay. we'll do it. And that's it. That's what we were able to get. Okay. 9932. Mm -hmm. Let me get back all 68 cents. Mm. I'll try not to spend There's it all at once. Take your eye. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. We'll see you later. While Dave was at the counter paying for his purchase, this African American man walked in. And it was it was really a jolt because this was the first non-white I had seen in Laverkin since I've been here. Does it bother you to see, you know, blacks in, in stores or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's, I, I believe in geographical separation. So yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I have, I have no control over it. I, you won't see them over my house for dinner. Johnny's sister, Barbara, can only speak to her kids when the court system says it's okay. I've been, I'm being made an example of. And it's breaking her heart. The courts won't let me be your mother. The therapist won't let me be your mother. Your dad won't let me be your mother. And I'm getting really mad. What are we going to be doing with those uh, shovels there, Johnny? Digging. <laughs> You're going to be digging and I'm going to be digging both. Digging for bottles. They say they work part-time jobs yeah. for their money. They don't work all that often, and we couldn't okay. film them there because they didn't want their co-workers to know about Alrighty. their affiliation with the militia. I'll we'll be back in a little bit. All right. I love you. All right, love you too. How about you drive? All right, I'll drive. You bet, you bet. The bottle hunt was a, was a really yeah, a special day for, for me and Johnny because it was the first time that we got to go out outside of his house, outside of town, and show me a part of his life. One reason we're going back there today to dig is we're looking for an old frosty root beer bottle. Come on, bottles. Bottle hunting is an exciting pastime. When you take it from the perspective of Johnny that it's, it's kind of like an archaeological dig to discover the recent American past. Knee high. Not a knee high. Another knee high. Now those are the precious ones. I think if we don't get these, somebody else will. Looks good. All right, throw it in there. Yeah. Good. I don't know. Look at that. Is that is that a paper label or painted on? It's uh, it's a fresca. Paper? No, it's painted on. Grab that thing. That's a fresco from like back in the 70s? Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a good one? Yeah. So how would you rate this bottle hunt on like a scale of one to 10? 10, we kicked ass. We got some good bottles. You know, uh, sometimes you'll be digging for a whole day and find one Pepsi bottle like the one we got. And uh, it might take two weeks to find a hire's bottle. And a fresca bottle, 
I've never found one before. <laughs> we ended up with two buckets full of bottles, you know, which are much more now than just old bottles. They're a symbol of what Johnny stands for and of the day we spent together. It is beautiful though, isn't it? Freezing your butt off. Oh my god, my call tonight. Those are my kids. Those are my kids. And they're not letting me know or letting me hear from my kids. Donnie and Audra haven't called for three weeks now. This will be the fourth fourth week in a row. Something's wrong because for some reason Don's not wanting the kids to call me. There's Jonah no is Barbara's me, son from her paid. present boyfriend. Me, which is her other paid. two kids were taken away by the family court judge because he determined her life in the militia endangered the kids. I've been, I'm being made an example of. I'm angry. Oh, God. I know this isn't them because it couldn't be. It's almost 8 o'clock. Okay. Hello? Hey, Don. Okay. <laughs> hey, Audra, how are you doing? I thought you weren't going to call me. I was so upset. <laughs> I was getting ready to cry. I'll be so excited to see you. You guys are going to be there at 10 o'clock, aren't you? I hope so. That's all I'm looking forward to. I re other Saturdays, oh, it's Donnie and Audrey, I get to go see Donnie and Audrey. I get so excited and I get real nervous though. Even after two and a half years, she hasn't given up this idea that she'll be able to get custody of her kids again. Oh, hell, I just get mad as hell because, you know, I get so mad thinking about this kind of stuff, Donnie, that they're pushing me too far. They, they just have to, you know, the courts won't let me be your mother, the therapist won't let me be your mother, your dad won't let me be your mother, and I'm getting really mad. I don't get to be a mom to you guys, and it drives me crazy. God, I miss you and take care of your throat. I love you, Donnie. I miss you. Bye-bye. All I can want to make sure is this will never happen to another parent, that they should lose their children because of their families religious beliefs. It seems like Dave is suspicious of us as he and his family evacuate their house. Everyone's who they are, you know? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't know how this whole thing's gonna turn out. David wouldn't really tell us what was going on. Be careful, not too close. This is their street right here, right? Yeah. But when we stopped by his house unannounced, it was clear that the Dalby family was on the She's move. Going in the house. Hey, uh, Fucking hot. All right, what just happened? They're, they're up to something, dude. They're up to something. What happened? I don't... I just got a note from fucking, uh, inside, uh, from inside the jail from somebody, a friend of mine, through a family member, through a brother-in-law, through a family member. It's a secret note got slipped out. The FBI's planning a f***ing raid. When? You've seen it in court documentation. Any time? Yep. There's both, something's going on, you guys. And, uh, well, where are you where are you headed now? Back home? Yeah. Just gonna go over there and uh, hang tight. Just do what you guys are doing, man. Be watch dog, guys. We're just keeping our, our well, eyes let, open. Let us have someone over there with well, you. If it if it starts going down, you you guys are welcome in, okay? Well, Johnny, someone has to be there before it goes down, or else we're not gonna be able to get in. Someone needs to be with you, Johnny. Okay. I'll meet you at your place. Okay. All right. He's freaking out. He is freaking out. There was a truck and a trailer in David's driveway. David was loading things into the trailer, and they appeared to be moving. Do you think they're leaving, leaving under cover of night right now? Should we say something to Dave? Yeah. So, Dave, you're moving all your stuff tonight? Yeah, most of it. It was strange. David suddenly didn't trust us. I don't like that girl. We just cut it. Dave, are you moving because you have a vehicle or because of this information from Johnny? No, God, I can't keep up with the information. <laughs> so this is on. nothing new? You're not concerned about that? Oh, I'm concerned about it. That's one of the reasons I'm getting to a place where I can be away from everything, yeah? Uh, all of a sudden, he was very cold and mistrustful. Oh, everyone, everyone's who they are, you know? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't know how this whole thing's gonna turn out. I don't know who's gonna get videotaped, you know? Just cause somebody's around or just cause they're on this videotape doesn't necessarily mean that they're in the militia. I don't know what's gonna be happening. I don't know what's gonna be said. I don't know what's gonna, you know? 
Why do you think there may be people representing themselves as militia members who are not really in? No, it's just I just know the way the media works. A lot of times they take like new recruits and take a bunch of stuff that's been said and and. Uh, I don't know what new recruits are saying. I hope they're learning. I, and I, when they come to meetings, I try to give them knowledge and stuff. But, you know, if you're going to try to get them as, like, a spokesman for the Rocky Mountain Militia, you didn't get it. And so, you know, hey, settle down. Take it down. Come here, honey. But we don't, you don't have to. Come here, honey. It seems like all of a sudden you're not, you no, I got, you, I got you a lot don't of trust us or, no, it's, it's or not, it's you not. think we're trying to screw you over right. or something. Moving out, not quite the scene of the moving we were expecting, huh? No, it's it's more like evacuating. The situation with Johnny is getting even more tense. He barricades himself in his house, but is the FBI really after him? Something's going on. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. I just I can feel it. So, so there we were, waiting for this federal raid. Me and Amanda, Johnny and his family, and three of his skinhead friends with guns. Have you guys heard anything from law enforcement that might tip anything off? or uh, Like what kind of thing? Like anything on scanners, anything you guys heard, just uh... If we heard something on the scanners, we would have been over here. Already we on the scanner. Johnny was really wired. He was running around, pacing. Good, good, good. When did you hear something? How'd that play out? I heard something earlier today from a jailhouse visit. Heard that the ATF was gonna hit my brother's house over something about ammunition. But why would a prisoner know what the FBI was doing? Uh, people in the prisons have for some reason had a little bit better access to the legal system than, uh, than we have. All of this is going on. They're making... <laughs> the kids got it. They got it. No matter what happens, right? Yeah, they, I thought they ate plenty, but all of a sudden they got, they got real hungry. I guess the threat of an no, FBI raid that? does that to your appetite. <laughs> so did you ever figure how much you'd be in for when you married Johnny Bangerter oh, so <laughs> long ago? Nope. No, we were just kids. We were just having fun. Yeah, we weren't in the movement when we got when we got married. But, you know, it's like not long after where we got started seeing things and reading literature and stuff. I, I've never seen a lot of these people before, and I, I pay close attention to my neighbor's cars. Look very suspicious. I've seen them drive back and forth. They'd stop. They didn't know where to turn. They didn't know the curves in the road. Sometimes I wonder whether Johnny is just paranoid, but I do know that the danger of a raid is real. Johnny has threatened the government in writing many times, and the FBI is aware of his activities. This is a crazy kind of life you guys are living right now. <laughs> really, I think my life's great. <laughs> but it's not. It's, it's, it's full. The, the craziness about it is just that, that they, they want to attack us, you know? Why do you think they would want to come and do a raid? Uh, a lot of reasons, just things that I've said. You know, sometimes I've uh, used my loud mouth a few times, been upset with one thing or another, and uh, the FBI has uh, hated uh, uh, my brother and I for a long time, and they've hated a lot of people in our group for a long time. Something's going on. I just, something is. It just wouldn't be this crazy. What do you do to prepare yourself? Uh, Make sure that the weapons are chambered. And that's it. Call everybody in California, Arizona, Idaho, Salt Lake, Denver. So have you gone through this a lot, worried that there's going to be a raid? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, ever since they killed our friends. And they shot Vicky and when they didn't wake up. Of course, you know, I'm worried about that. I'm worried about it. But, uh, you know, we're prepared. Prepared to fight. I mean, those. If they're gonna attack us, you know, that they're gonna be the immoral ones and, and whatever we do after that, we're gonna be the right ones. There's no such thing as a boy cry wolf in this movement. And that's what the FBI tries to get. They try to get us frustrated, like they do with Randy Weaver over and over and over. Randy Weaver was a separatist who was killed in a gun battle with the FBI. Militia members everywhere consider Weaver a hero and the government murderers who took his life.
what do you see as your role in, in this? You said if there's a fight, you'll fight. Well, I'll be protecting my children. You know, I'll never let the devil take the children out of my hands. They're my children, you know. God gave them to me to take care of, and, you know, if I fail, I would, I would be a sin. Something's going on. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. I just, I can feel it. Definitely feel it. What does that say? Idol! That says idol. Yep. That's the head dude. He kicks ass. <laughs> Is this the meal that you eat before the feds come? Oh, God, it's pretty giddy. I, uh, <laughs> I don't even like spaghetti, but right now, it's the only thing I can eat. I figured that the threat of a federal raid was over when they turned the lights on and Johnny and Gia sat down to a plate of spaghetti. Yeah, what time do we get up today? Like early, huh? So the raid never happened. Next time on Eyewitness. Dave is suddenly on the other side of discrimination. They said, well, you know, a lot of neighbors would call. I said, well, you know what? That's just their tough problem. You know, I can't be discriminated against. The sheriff is going after Johnny. This Johnny's going to be a pain in the ass. Now, you need to stay in the car now, all right? Sure thing. But Johnny won't back down. One day, we're going to have to meet face to face with the federal scumbags, and we're going to unload some lead on them.